if you if you think that the church is the the place to do contextual theology then the question is what do you do what what is it that we're doing um and what i what i want to argue we're doing here is we are um plumbing the the depths of the riches of christ um which is exactly what the new testament calls us to and we're doing it in fellowship with each other and that means really i guess it's kind of pulls us in two directions or it creates a tension for us um in one sense we want every culture to really own the gospel we want every culture to find that the gospel belongs to them that it is not a foreign thing imported in um, or forced upon them and that actually the gospel has the power to bring the best out of their culture to perfect it to make it into what it should have been without the fall um so that's that's one task. That's sort of the 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 missionary task of the church. Um, at the same time, we want every church to feel that they they belong to all these other cultures, right? And so this is why you can't push for purely local theology. If you want to be biblical, you have to push always for let's deepen our understanding locally. But let's also make sure that we are in fellowship with people from other cultures, and maybe especially the ones that kind of uh, tend to make us mad or make us worried, um, because that's how the church is supposed to work. It's not, I think there's often a mistake in contextual theology of kind of getting very, very local. And if you do that, I think you're departing from the spirit of, of Christian witness, which is let's deepen locally but let's keep that unity and let's work together. So uh, that that's the tension. There's You have said so much just in that part there. This is where it really flies in the face of where our contemporary isolated kind of culture is at, where we want to be safe. We want to interact with people that look and sound like us. As you already talked about, I mean, you've mentioned it indirectly, um, I was having a chat the other day and we were talking about generative AI mm. and uh, with, with someone who's kind of in that, that arena. Mm. And he, uh, he'd been a NASA physicist. I mean, there's a brilliant, brilliant man. And we're talking about AI and just the fracturing of trust. He said, the thing about AI is he goes, you're going to look in about a hundred years. And let's say you wanted to get a book on Oz Guinness and he's written like 37 books, yeah. but there are, 500 out there that purport to be written by him and you don't know which ones actually were written by generative AI or which ones right. there. And I said, well, what does that mean? What are the ramifications? And he said, what you're going to see is it's a fracturing of trust because people don't know who to trust. And therefore mm -hmm. they're going to have to trust those who are closest to them rather yeah. than those that are out in the world. So that's going to change how we do things, yeah. but this is where the hard work comes in. And this is where I think in the Western culture, and again, and I don't want to just say in the West, I think where where the accoutrements that have defined Western culture um, help us fall short, especially as the internet continues to privatize us, it socially isolates us and yeah. we're away from one another. And so what we, we think though, is that the faith is just for me and my own kind of self-help, my own personal walk. But it's not. This is the hard work of actually engaging someone in an interpersonal relationship, and it's not easy. And I remember I would end the services at our church, and I would say, talk to someone from a different cultural background than yourself. It's going to be awkward, but awkward is awesome. And the whole church would finish it. They would finish it. Awkward is awesome. Awkward is awesome. And I wanted to get that into their minds. But today, what we've done is just, especially in the West, it's come in, get my spiritual fix, go out. And relationships have become disposable and people don't want to be uncomfortable. What you're telling us and you're showing us is that this is actually part of the plan of God. Yeah. If we're to really know Jesus, or as Paul even talked about, I want to share in his sufferings. I have to yeah. suffer myself to be able to do so. To understand yeah. the person and the nature of God and what his plan is for the world, we have to be able to engage relationally with people that are different from us, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, uh, the thing I think about is Ephesians four, where the, oh, yeah. there, there's this vision of uh, the of the church as sort of growing up into its full self and in the maturity, uh, right? In the maturity, right? Full maturity as the body of Christ is is to kind of and and it, it uses the language even like every joint, <laughs> which is fascinating, right? Uh, get every joint equipped, meaning 
that means you have to have things that are different working together. Um, and so this is repeatedly, you know, the vision of the church laid out, not just in Paul, but throughout the whole New Testament. Um, and it's, you know, it's just sort of, if you want to be a Christian, if you want to follow Jesus, this is, this is what it is. Uh, the, uh, you can't do that as just you and Jesus on your own, um, or just me and Jesus and my culture. Um, that, that also is a mistake. Um, so.